The next showcase is our live showcase with Darlene Hertz. Having lived a life believing there was a ceiling attached to her potential, career, freedom, worth, relationships, and even income, the day came when Darlene realized that there was truly no ceiling on anything in life. Darlene is an expert on the science of positivity, mindset, and success. She is the CEO, Chief Empowerment Officer, and founder of You Empowered Services. She provides the missing piece for business owners, entrepreneurs, and sales professionals and their teams to have a more positive attitude, gain lasting motivation, increase sales, and overall more happiness and fulfillment in life and business. Darlene has studied the neuroscience of success and mindset for the past eight years and brings her education, experience, and wisdom through her unstoppable success program, offering mindset and success training and coaching to the business community. Her greatest love, though, is that of being Gigi to her four grandchildren, a wife, a mom, a daughter, and a friend. Please welcome the one with the biggest smile in the room, Darlene Hurts, to share with us the gain of pain. On Saturdays when I work, I listen to YouTube all day long of inspirational speakers and just people to power my creativity. And I was listening to a man named T.D. Banks one day, big, burly preacher, he's got a voice as big as the sun. And he stopped short. He was a preacher. Well, he is a preacher turned business person, businessman, very successful. And that's what he was talking about. And he was talking about how people look at him and go, I want your success. I want to be just like you. He said, but what they failed to see is when I had to pick apples off the trees to feed my kids. When I was using paper towels because we couldn't afford diapers. They liked this, but they didn't see all the failures along the way. And it really caught my attention because he was such a really good storyteller. And it was at a point where I was like, oh, my gosh, what am I doing here? Is this all worth it? What, what do I need to do next? All the questions that we ask ourselves as uh, business owners and entrepreneurs when we're in that, I'll just call it a funk. So today, what I want to share with you is about failing forward on your way to success, navigating the pain of gain. And that was one of the points that uh, TD Banks kept making was that for every pain, there is a gain if you so choose, because we all can agree that choice is a powerful thing. Suffering is optional. Fair? So this is what where I see people that really come to my business, either training or coaching. 99% of the world live in a comfort zone. This is where they feel safe and they're in control. And I'm going to say feel safe in terms of they know what's going to happen. They're miserable. They complain. They have no hope, but they know the sun's going to come up tomorrow. So they're better off just staying right there because the next thing that you get to go through is fear. And that's what holds us back from getting anywhere in life is fear. Fear of fill in the blank, being judged. Fear of falling on our face. Fear of we all have our own blank that we can fill in and maybe several if you're like me. So what happens is we stay in this zone and we make excuses. Oh my gosh, inflation's here. Oh my gosh, they say the first two quarters are going to be a recession. I might as well close my shop. Instead of going through the fear zone so that you can get to the learning zone. When we get to the learning zone, we develop confidence. We really can really focus on really acquiring new skills and increasing knowledge. You see, when our unconscious mind is shut down for fear, none of those things can happen because we're back to survival. We're willing to do anything we can to stay in this little circle because we just don't know what's on that other side. And then when we get through the learning zone, we get to the growth zone. And that's where all the glory is, right? That's where all the gold is. We're so open to finding our purpose, setting our goals, all the things that really create success in our life. In the military, they teach that when you are ready to give up, you are at 40% of your potential, 40%.
because we stay in that comfort zone. So what does that mean? We have 60% of our potential just, just waiting to bust out of us. And yet we're really, we're really ready to put that closed sign up, right? 40%. So I want to talk about failing backwards versus failing forward. When we play the, the uh, game of failing backwards, we're playing the blame game. It's the but that was spot on. It negates what is the truth. Hitting the repeat button, doing what's the definition of insanity? Doing the same thing over and over again, expecting different results. Never going to get anywhere. Expecting to never fail again. Otherwise known as the perfection clause, right? I'm never going to fail or just the opposite, always expecting to fail because we know what we say to ourselves becomes our reality, right? And I want to do a quick little demo on the power of that really quick. And I need a volunteer. Come on, Dale. It's always the tallest guy in the room. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> so I want to show you the power of our words. And this is going to be really fun because Dale knows what I know. <laughs> so stand in front of me and put your arms out in front of you. Um, make this way. Make the T. There you go. I'm still here. Okay, so I'm going to say something to you. No, you're fine. You're fine. What I'm going to say to you, and I just want you to listen, okay? And the whole time I want you to keep your arms up, okay? You good? You ready? I'm weak. I'm weak. I'm weak. Come on, Dale. I'm weak. Get your arms up there. I'm weak. I'm weak. I'm weak. Okay, good. Now, I'm going to say, I'm strong. I'm strong. I'm strong. I'm strong. I'm strong. Do you see the difference? Were you putting all of it, all of yourself into that? Yes. Now, let's see what happens when he talks to himself like that. Okay, you ready? You go, I'm weak, I'm weak first. I'm weak, I'm weak, I'm weak, I'm weak, I'm weak. I'm weak. Good, good, thank you. Ready? I'm strong. I'm strong, I'm strong, I'm strong, I'm strong, I'm strong, I'm strong. I'm strong. Excellent, thank you. Let's give him a hand. That truly is the power of how and what we say to ourselves. We truly create as we speak. So when we're constantly telling ourselves, I'm going to fail, this is too hard, I can't do this, ta-da, that's what shows up in front of you. Accepting tradition blindly. If I've heard it once, I've heard it a thousand times. It's the way we've always done it. And you're still getting the same results, <laughs> right? When we accept tradition blindly, because it is what it is, we can never move forward. We're eventually going to fail backwards, right? What does universal tell us? Universal all tell us we're either moving forward or we're moving backwards. We're never standing still. Thinking I'm a failure. We talked about that and then just quitting. To me, the only way you can possibly fail at anything is to call it quits. On the other side, when we take responsibility for what happened, or what's happening in our business, in our lives, whatever, in our relationships, when we take responsibility, that is the first empowering thing that you can do. Find, even if you believe it's not your fault, okay? Take responsibility, just one little thing that you could have done different. As simple as, we're expecting four to six inches of snow tomorrow, today. When is that happening? Tomorrow. Because... <laughs> I don't have my Christmas shopping done. <laughs> so tomorrow at 8 o'clock, 8 p.m., I can say, this isn't my fault. The snow came, right? And yet I'm standing before you a good 24 plus hours sooner saying, my Christmas shopping isn't done. I get to make a choice. That's the way it is in everything in life. Learning from our mistakes. Again, the only way we can possibly grow is the pain before the game. Is that fair? We can only learn from mistakes. Knowing failure is part of the process, once we accept that, 
And that is literally holding up the mirror again for myself when I got into this, is knowing that failure is going to happen, but it's only there for me to learn, readjust. Maintain a positive attitude. That's so easy to type right there. <laughs> and yet sometimes we go, ooh, la, la, right? But the thing is, is if you have those momentarily uh, negative thoughts, have something in place, have someone in place where that's just something you're passing through. That is not someplace you're ready to stay stuck in. Challenging outdated assumptions. That speaks for itself. And I'm just going to stop there taking risks and persevering. That's the difference. Do you see the difference, obviously, about move, uh, moving backwards or forward when it comes to failing? I just want to share this with you because I, it's not a really good picture, but it'll make my point. This is a normal brain on, the on your left-hand side. That's like a normal brain. On the right is what they call a complaining brain, okay? And as you can see, all the lack of space in areas. Now, I'm not a neuroscientist that I can explain the science to you about this. But what I do know is what you feed grows, literally. The more you complain, the less space your brain has to operate. And that stands true for all the things. What you feed grows. What you starve dies. When you feed negativity it grows. When you surround yourself with people who are not building you up, these sorts of things happen. And all of that begins at, with our mind. And I talk about the conscious mind and the unconscious mind. So in our conscious mind, that's 10% of who we are. And yet our conscious mind is arrogant enough to believe that it's running our whole life, when in fact, it's our unconscious mind. Because not only is that where our heart is pumping, our blood is flowing, our muscles are working, all of that going on, that's also where your habits, your behaviors, your emotions, all of those are stored, starting from the time that you're born. And then what happens? About seven years old, you kind of, you kind of have the picture. Anybody ever said you're acting like a child or been told you're acting like a child? It's quite possible that you are <laughs> because at age seven, we've gotten all those emotions. We began those patterns and habits that are deeply ingrained and we react to situations based on that, especially if we've never invested in personal growth to where we're not even aware of this. Okay, three stages to learning. This actually is like my self-forgiveness clause in my business growth. Three stages of learning, awkward, mechanical, and natural. And the easiest way to describe that is whenever you have, anybody have children in their lives? Please, everybody, do because this will make this really easy. <laughs> so whenever they start to walk, they're very awkward, right? They're very awkward. They're unstable. We don't even know if they, if they stand up the first time. What's the first thing they do is fall. What happens if they never give up and get up again? You know, they're six years old going to kindergarten crawling because they've never moved to not even a mechanical stage. And then the next time maybe you see your niece or nephew, you notice that they're walking, but they're very mechanical about it, right? And then the next time you see them, they're running to greet you because they've reached the natural stage of the learning process. Mechanical, or excuse me, awkward, mechanical, natural. That's how we learn. And when we can embrace the fact that sometimes that pain is because we're in the awkward stage and that's okay. And so what do we need to do to become mechanical? And then what has to happen to become natural? And the only way to get to the natural part is practice, practice, practice. And you can't get to the natural part without the awkward and the mechanical stage. So leaving you with... Fail, fail is first attempt in learning. Fair, first attempt in learning. What a grace. <laughs> so look at the word fail like that. And there is no failure. There is only feedback unless you make the choice to quit. And then that's a whole different story. You can have results or you can have excuses. 
You cannot have both. And that's it. How was that for timing, Mark? <laughs> I'll try to be better next time. Any questions, Karen? My, my. It struck me with the awkward mechanical natural. We've been, you know, through COVID, like I haven't been speaking much. And I feel like I'm going to be starting over again, that awkward feeling then a little bit more mechanical and then natural. So it was good for my brain to be able to look that path. Yeah. That's fair. Yes, sir. Yeah, I want to uh, talk a little bit about the word fail and failure. <clears throat> I've talked about failing forward for quite some time. And, and now I'm beginning to think maybe I should disabuse myself of using that word because it has such negative connotations for people. And what you did in your last slide is actually something that I'm thinking about doing is, is just taking the word, you know, fail forward out of it and simply talk about, you remember your first slide, how you showed steps of failure? They're stepping stones to success, not failures to success. Sure. And I don't know what your thoughts are about perhaps changing that kind of language. Yeah, I think that you make an excellent point. Um, and I guess probably, again, it's kind of the intention because I was so focused on failure today. Um, stepping Stones to Success is a really great um, opportunity to promote a different way of looking at it. Definitely. Thank you for that. Anybody else? Thank you very much. <laughs>